Hey, everybody, I'm Pastor DeAndre Patterson of the Afternoon Show at Inspiration 1390. It is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful season. But what makes it even more wonderful is that I have one of Chicago's greatest, one of the nation's greatest, one of the world's greatest, my friend, my son's girlfriend, Anita Wilson. <laughs> Good day. Good day, my friend. How are you? Are you doing all right? I am. I cannot complain at all. God is good. God is good. I'm happy to be with you today. I'm glad you're with me today. He's been kind to you, Anita. God is good. God is good. I'm 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 grateful. Um, you know, we still here and I I'm still here doing this music and and People continue to support it. And I just don't take God's grace for granted. I really don't. Because it, it could be another way in so many ways. So, uh, and I know we comfortable because the world kind of opening back up, but uh, I'm still super cautious. It is not lost on me that we've lived through a very crazy time. So, hey, I'm grateful. I see all of the background. Uh, is Are those your favorites? These are some of my favorites that I had in my or uh, Rick Robinson's collection. So these are some of my favorite vinyls and I call it my soul wall because, you know, I love soul music. So um, I made a wall with the vinyls that I had and I'm continuing to, to collect them. So, of course, I got, of course, I'm up there. <laughs> so, but yeah, these are some of my favorites, some of my influences. That's why I love that. So what is going on? What's new? So you started recording when and now bring us up to what's happening right now. Yeah, well, we definitely uh, were productive during the pandemic, thankfully, uh, doing kind of a remote album and getting files from every everywhere, musicians and singers across the country. Grateful that that worked out that way, because, you know, those files aren't always of good quality when you do them in different places. But it has come together so well. We started in uh, like September of 2020. We've been writing for this album like we normally do for like uh, the last year and a half to two years. So we started recording in September of, of last year and we just took our time. And one of the joys of being independent is that I don't have tight deadlines or anybody breathing down my neck, get it done, get it done, get it done. So I just been saying, I'm gonna let this album come to me. And um, God, God has provided uh, with my independent label reflection media he just has provided the means to um record another album so i'm excited we literally sent the whole thing to the master engineer yesterday uh so i'm done i'm, I'm stressed and i'm done <laughs> but I'm, I'm so relieved because i feel good about these vibes that, that rick and i came up with it's a very free space to create from um and this, you know, we got a song coming out that'll be the lead single, but I'm excited about the whole album. I love presenting bodies of work. So that's what we kept ourselves busy with uh, while in quarantine. Uh, is, is this the single that you sent me? Yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> so that's, of course, that drops, you know, September, uh, September, August, uh, mm -mm, get us together, Nita. Still Alive drops July. 23rd so oh, it is it is everybody say still alive that joint is that joint is nice thank you <laughs> thank you so much you had me feeling good when i sent it to you and you i was like okay because you know you, you always think your stuff is cool but when somebody else gives you feedback it's like okay so Look, thank I, start, you. I started to sample that on the radio i was just too afraid that i was gonna get in trouble <laughs> <laughs> it's all good it's all good Get it out there. Hey, it's time. It it's time to go in and get it out there. So feel free. <laughs> so what's, what's the date for the single? So, uh, July 23rd. July 23rd. Wow. Yep. Just... So we are, we are, it has been a long time coming and we are glad that we are not going to be the only people just listening to this music. It's, it's going to be a very great feeling to get it out there. So everybody can um, not only like the music, but I pray that the message, um, excuse me, um, resonates. You know, I think we can get so comfortable so quickly when things begin to get better. Uh, and we forget how much we were just uncertain of everything uh, just a year ago. Um, and there's a there's a list of over 600, 700,000 people that died from this uh, deadly COVID. But we still here. We here. You got your hat on. You got we 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 didn't will our 
ourselves in. We could bathe ourselves. We are in our right minds. Uh, we are not on a ventilator. When I when I heard about people having to say goodbye phone like this and yeah. people dying alone. So many things happen, Pastor. So many things happen. And you're, we're blessed if none of that came close to our family. So uh, I just want to, I, I feel like Still Alive is that song as we introduce these new, this new music. I feel like it's the song where I'm just busting out the door and let me testify. Give me yeah. one minute, y'all. I am still here and I really hope the lyrics uh, resonate with everybody. It's a great tune. I'm gonna send it to my uh, to my sister in law. So we, you know, in March, uh, when the pandemic hit, yeah, uh, the, same, the same month, my sister in law, my wife's sister, mm -hmm. her husband died of COVID. Jesus, Lord. And then, uh, so we made it through all of that. We had quite a few members of the church in Maywood that passed away from it. And, gosh, gosh. And then May of this past uh, Mother's Day. My baby sister, uh, she she died. It wasn't of COVID, oh. but it was in the yeah. middle of all of the yeah yeah. Chaos. Wow, I'm so sorry. Really going on. So, but yeah. the song itself, uh, it's still a blessing to so 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 many. It's gonna bless so many because you yeah. are testifying of mm -hmm. the pandemic. You're testifying of the trouble, of the chaos that sometimes life and ministry brings. But uh, yes, yes. It blessed me in a good time, in a hard space, but in a good time. Good, good. I'm glad. I'm glad. That's all I can can hope for when releasing music and uh, doing what I'm able to do and being able to bless people and lift spirits uh, as much as possible during this still challenging time. You, you know, so I'm sorry for the for the deaths that you guys experienced, and and I just want to do my part uh, to lift spirits. And, 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 and keep people motivated because I, after losing my father, when you lose people, you really get caught up in that loss and yeah. you have to be reminded whether it's someone else or you reminding yourself, you're still here. Yeah. So, so don't, so don't, I, I get it. So lament and, and, and cry and let all of that out. But there's that point where we have to remind ourselves and our, our spirit and our hearts and our souls that we're still here. So God, give me the strength and the focus and the pick me up to yeah. do what you still have me here to do so um yeah we all in this together hey so let me ask you a question so are yeah. you are you still here in chicago did you because you know all of our great artists and musicians leave chicago to Texas, Georgia. So. <laughs> this is true this is true i am still in chicago for now <laughs> for now as as of now yes yes i am and chicago will always be home i feel like um chicago raised me and I moved here as early in my early 20s uh, yeah. in 99 um, but so many pivotal things happened in my life here in Chicago and it made me the woman that I am um, with serving with my brother's church pastor Frederick Wilson uh, serving at fellowship serving with Donald Lawrence it was so many training grounds that God allowed me to be on that I can now apply all of those lessons and still have those amazing mentors um, to be connected to. And that happened in Chicago. So no matter no matter where I, I land, uh, Chicago will always be home uh, for me. So much love to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't care where you live, I'm gonna always say Chicago's home girl, Anita Wilson. Yes, yes, please do, please do. <laughs> Yes, 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 indeed. So where are you? I know you're still, you, you're doing your solo piece and you're yeah. kind of flying alone. Yeah. And I'm sure if Donald calls you, make some appearances, that's your brother. Mm -hmm. So I know that you're going to make sure that you're yep. doing what you do. But where are yep. you serving? Is there a particular place in church that you're serving in? Not at this time. Not at this time. Um, I, have, I have just been in full-time music ministry with my career uh for eight years plus now um so i haven't i haven't served i've gotten some opportunities so i don't know what may arise um but for now i'm just doing this full time so i haven't landed uh at a church serving at a church definitely has a lot of value to it so i think that's very important i think that's uh, a pivotal space for everyone to be in and experience um and yeah, I think my time had, it, it was it was the season for me to commit totally to these doors that God had opened up for me with this music um, 
that we had released and it has sustained me all this time. Uh, so I wanted to avail myself totally to that, but I'm always open for the right opportunities um, if and when they arise. So we will see, we will see, we will see what comes up for me. A few more questions I want to ask you. You, you, okay. you, you like you like soul, and so when you were first, mm -hmm. uh, you put out I think your first project or the second project, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Um, was it gospel soul? Was it inspirational soul? What what yeah. heart and soul? What was that? Yeah, the first album was entitled Worship Soul. Um, and we came up with that because when we got all the tracks done and me and Rick were like, what, shout out to Rick Robinson, my co-creator, my producer, my creative architect, my husband, my best friend. Um, but I was, we were like, okay, so what does this music sound feel like? Like, what is the name of this? And we, from the get go, we, we allowed our influences to naturally come out in what we wrote. Um, and I say that like that, I, I feel like influence is different than imitation. You know, imitation is when you write down like, okay, we gonna, we gonna write a song just like so-and-so. Like listen to, okay, we gonna write a song just like that. That's when you're trying to imitate something. But influence, I love it because we just sit down and see what vibes we feel. And when we write those lyrics, so we write that bridge, it's like, oh, they got a little earth, wind and fire vibe like right there. Or ah, I felt a little Hawkins right there. That's kind of cool. You know, I love how it naturally comes out. So when we listen to it, the way we were merging those soul influences, but I'm, I, I came from a Baptist church. So I'm a church girl that just comes out. So it felt like worship and soul married together. So that's how we named the first album. The second album was Vintage Worship. I feel like my sound basically is Worship Soul. And it'll always be those sounds marrying together. Um, and we just, uh, throughout the journey, we just kind of dug into the crates of the people that we love and went to school and had Aretha on repeat and had the Hawkins on repeat and the Winans and the Clarks and all of that. And, and Sly Stone and James Brown and D'Angelo, you know, all that stuff uh, just feels good when you think about uh, art yeah because I think being an artist uh there should be art with it um so we always tie in the message it's about love it's about God it's about uh forgiveness it's about insecurity this album is definitely going to be my most personal album that we, we're about to release because it's about life it's about loss um it's about those the, those insecurities that I feel when I'm on stage and nobody even realizes it but you're pushing past <laughs> that you know so it's it's it's, it's going to open up a lot of um subject matters but uh, many people, Pastor D, have asked me, why do you sing gospel? You know, your, your, your sound, your, your, your voice, you can sing R&B and your voice got this little thing on it. And while I've done some jazz stuff and, you know, I've done some R&B collaborations and stuff, my heart is just with Jesus and my heart is, I'm a church girl. So that'll always be the basis of um, where my music comes from. And I also have that freedom. So in live shows or whatever, I might sing some SWV or I might sing some jazz or something, but um, that's my heart. So yeah, I am worship soul. It's just that marriage that, that comes together. <laughs> I love it. I love the way you explained it and given the interpretation of it, translating it into uh the 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 knowledge of what it is you know people perish mm -hmm. from lack of knowledge mm -hmm. and they can't enjoy what they don't understand but when i tell you <laughs> the first one the second one all of them have blessed me i don't know which one is my favorite all i know is that you can hear the soul you can hear the r and b mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was saying, coming from the sanctified church, how am I going to get into the presence of the Lord through this through this R and B and this right. soul? And all I know was I was on a plane. I had my headphones on, crying my eyes out. Yes, worshiping. <laughs> my whole house loves it. You are an wow. amazing talent and an amazing Thank gift. You. And I'm glad to call you friend and a Thank part you. of the city of Chicago. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That that means so much. Um, and I know that many people kind of have those reservations the same way. And I hope that everyone just gives the music a chance, even um, I may be getting ahead of ourselves uh, ahead of us. But this leads me 
to thinking about the concert that I have coming up in Chicago, yeah, uh, which is at City Winery. And you made me think about that because sometimes some people are familiar with that venue, so they know the feel of it. They hey, they're looking forward to it. Other people, when they hear City Winery, she'll be a City Winery. What, what do you mean? Um, that 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 that's a very polished music venue where you can have dinner and listen to live music. Uh, there are mostly. Um, non-gospel artists that play that venue. Uh, so I'm honored to be a part of the artists um, that that rotate in those venues because that gives me that chance. It used to scare me. It used to make me so uncomfortable uh, when I would go to musicals or, or churches and, and they would be like bumping or like or squalling and having some good church. And then I'm like, Lord, I'm gonna go up to the time but I can say that you're wonderful. <laughs> that don't nobody wanna hear this, but well, you know, so I, I had to find the comfort in the in the space that God has placed me in and to know that um, it can surprise some people. Like you said, I, and then you end up, you know, yeah. you, have, you have reservations about it. It could um, lead some people that don't even know that they want to get closer to God. You know, some of the homies and some of the, the cats on the, on, the, on the street and, and, and the girls that's at the club or whatever. I've gotten so many stories and testimonies of feedback. Um, from all walks of life that have yeah. connected to my music. And that's what matters. I always say, I don't need my, I don't need to tell my brother or my sister how amazing my father was when he was yeah. on earth. I don't need to say he was funny. He was cool. He was kind of short. He was, I don't need to say that because they know him. So yeah. I can tell maybe somebody else that doesn't know my father. Yeah. He was cool. He would say he was brown skin. He would laugh. He had a sense. So that's my analogy. Like, I don't need to just sing to Christians all the time. I need to good. sing to non-Christians too, so they can know this joy that we live in. Um, so City Wineries is September 4th, and I hope y'all will get y'all tickets and just come hang out with me. We will, The album will be out at that time, so we'll be doing new music and the past 10 years of music too that God has allowed us to release. So I'm excited. I'm grateful, and I'm excited. I want y'all to check her out on the 4th at the Chicago Winery. Chicago City Winery, yep. Chicago City Winery, and don't be too deep. Let me tell you, let me let me say something in 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 support of what Anita is doing. What Anita is doing is not new. Walter Hawkins, Andre Crouch had to break through traditional barriers and denominational barriers, and they took their music to places. They took Jesus to places yes. that uh, folk just would not come to other than to those spots. And so right. when Snoop Dogg, Anita, when Snoop Dogg did his gospel album, yeah. his CD, oh, people's calling the station, what you think, what you think, what you think. And so finally I said, the world needs the answer. And I'm telling you, you can't call on Jesus too many times and something don't happen on the inside. That's right. So let's yeah. call on the Lord. And the, 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 the best part about this is that the majority of our R&B artists came out of the church. Indeed, they did. And indeed, they did. It, I was talking to, I do this um, YouTube series called Lady Legends, where I salute salute women that have influenced me and that are doing their thing. I had Shirley Murdoch on, and she was talking about how... Um, People hear that gospel in your voice, even when, when you're singing anything else. And she was talking about the route that God took her because people used to frown on her for singing. You know the song she sang as we lay and all of that. But she was like, I found myself in clubs with Zapp and Roger and people saying, you know, I wasn't going to work today, but it, you really inspired me when you were singing. And I, you, I don't know, you made me want to get closer to God. And, you know, so you just never know, even if we're singing a love song at a mm -hmm. wedding, mm -hmm. there's a timber in your tongue. Home, mm -hmm. glory to God mm -hmm. that connects to people and you could be singing inseparable while the bride mm -hmm. is walking down but it's something that's coming out of your heart mm -hmm. that has people crying and it's touching lives and all of that so it was a process for me but I, I am I am so comfortable in this space um it's unique it's different but I want to reach who God wants me to reach and I, I listen I want to be empty when I leave here yeah. so uh, yeah. I'm not going to be scared anymore I'm going to just let it be what it is and remain respectful across the board and uh let God do the rest congratulations Anita on everything the new project uh the new ventures the mm -hmm. sky is the limit 
Um, yes. And then the concert is coming up on September 4th. Everybody, I want you all to meet us over at the Chicago City Winery. City Winery. Yep. <laughs> Dylan knows where it is. Yes. What's <laughs> up, Dylan? I hope Dylan will be there. <laughs> hey, Corey. I love Corey. That's my brother. Well, so I hope the child will be there. there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, DeAndre Patterson hanging with you on this great day. The one and only Anita Wilson. Anita, thank you for the time. Thank you. you. And the information, uh, the grace that's on your life, the anointing that's on your life. And you can sing inseparable, and I'll probably have my hands raised. So <laughs> I'll probably forget that it ain't even a gospel song, but yes. you know, you sang it. there's an anointing <laughs> on it. <laughs> amen. Amen. Well, thank I you, my you friend. Sister. I appreciate you. I, I love, love you. you. Be blessed,